Wait, everybody just check the floor. Who's seen the crawling eye? Here's your spooky spawn on the NECA Toys Misfits Ultimate Fiend action figure. Too much of the horror business? Never! The Misfits are one of the most recognized punk bands ever, and NECA is giving their mascot the ultimate action figure treatment. This seven inch action figure of the Fiend is dressed in flowing black robes and comes complete with interchangeable hands, daggers, records, and candelabra accessories. The figure features three interchangeable heads, including one that recreates the highly stylized version rendered in artwork painted by the late great Basil Gogos. What a better band to represent Halloween. In fact, actually, on Legacy of Brutality, they had a song called Halloween. Of course, before we get a closer look at the Ultimate Fiend, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. I'd like to go ahead and also thank the folks over at NECA that did provide this sample of the Fiend that we could have a look at in this review. The figure in this case stands almost 7 inches in height, not quite, or the figure is going to be about 17 centimeters tall. One figure I did want to bring in for comparison is just to slide over the Fiend here. I did want to bring in the original Ultimate Ghostface. The reasoning why I did actually want to bring him in is while it does appear like the figure is slightly taller than the Fiend, they are in fact actually using the exact same body. We'll talk more on matching molds in a moment. First, though, I did want to show you guys the accessories to come include with the Ultimate Fiends. For the naked eye, you may notice that these be identical daggers. The handles and the guard are all painted the same until you actually look at the blades. The blades look the same until you spin them around. And then you'll notice that one of the blade has actually got blood on the end of it. Don't worry, it's not my own blood. They have actually taken the time to paint a little bit of red on the end of the blade so that the blades on the daggers aren't exactly the same. I've already taken the liberty, in fact, of actually popping off the existing relaxed hands and popped in place, gripping hands instead. So right now he's good to go when it comes to holding daggers. Now let's just say you don't want to have him holding both daggers. Instead, you want to have him holding something else. Well, the figure then also comes in clue with a candelabra. I am sure we have gotten this candelabra before. We have looked at retro cloth fiend figures in the past as well. And I'm sure we have gotten probably this candelabra in the past. It's been molded here. I'm guessing probably in a more darker plastic and then probably painted in the gold. Companies don't tend to mold a lot of things in metallic, especially metallic gold like this, but it does look like it's been painted. You got a little bit of dripping of the wax coming down the candles. And then ironically enough, for what little there's left of the candle, they are actually making quite the flames on the ends of the candles. Those look really neat. And again, those can be clipped into either one of his hands. What's really interesting is the fact that the figure comes in clue with albums. Some of these albums actually were stuck together. So when I first took them out the tray, I actually thought there was only just two albums. One of them I had to pry apart, and it's still, in fact, a little bit on the stickier side. You can see the various albums that we got here, Horror Business for the Misfits, and we got a couple of other ones here also as well. They don't hold the records. I would imagine the records would be quite small if you were to be, I'd be able to pull these out. But the fact that you actually have like little recreations of the, of the actual albums definitely be something I'd be holding in the Fiend's hands. The figure as well comes in clue with, as you probably have already noticed, it's way off in the background here. It does also come in clue with the tombstone. The tombstone does say 1977 Lodi, New Jersey. And you can see as well, it's got the sculpting of the fiend there of the head sculpt and then the font of the, of the band down below there as well. Nothing is on the back, but it's sculpted really nicely though. If you didn't want to use this necessarily for the fiend, you could also technically flip this around and just have a nameless tombstone, maybe amongst some of the other, like if you had Jason Voorhees, for example, you could put some of those other tombstones in. You basically use one of these. Or in fact, actually, why not just advertise the misfits? You could kind of just have one of the tombstones in the back. I might just end up using this for another display. Move that to the side. The figure as well, I already mentioned, that comes in clue with some relaxed hands. The thing, though, about the hands is that they were extremely easy to remove. I'm going to pick up the figure to show you exactly what I mean. First of all, I'm just going to bring up the cloak here and show you guys what the arms look like. Again, I think the arms are all also the same ones shared with Ghostface from before. Although with Ghostface, they would have actually glued the, the actual sleeve over top of it. So you wouldn't have access to the hinges like you get here with the Fiend. But though the hands are extremely easy to remove... Just popping them off from the provided peg. Of course, you've got a very long peg here. And then you just replace them with, with then you, the hands that you want to use. Now, these hands are actually a very more softer plastic, unlike the denser plastic that they would have used for the forearms. Now, with these, I guess you could probably have them holding the album, say, this way, sort of with the thumb in his fingers. 
displayed in a figure, maybe like that. Or you can also, again, clip the albums inside his more closed gripped hand. The only thing about that is it's probably going to start to bend the cardboard because, again, these are his cardboard albums. The last thing that the figure also comes included with involves me first to slide all the other things out of the way. Also, as well, comes included with additional head sculpts. Now, with these, this one actually is not that much different from the one that we already start with, other than this one seems like a little bit more of a brighter white. The sculpting appears to be the same between the two. It's not, in fact, until you actually get to this one that you notice there's a, a stark difference in paint. Now, this one is actually more this stylized design by Basil Gogos, and I'm glad to see that they actually took the time to include that. You can see, like, the head sculpt, again, is same, but they painted it so nicely instead with the additional blues and highlights of white. I probably would still be displaying him, I think, with this one, just because, again, it kind of reminds me more of The Fiend. But I love the idea that they would have included the Basil Gogo head sculpt. I think that's a nice touch on NECA's part. By the way, all the heads are easy to remove. I'm just going to, first of all, bring down the cloak collar and just pop that off and then just replace it with the head that you want to use. Now, I'm just going to pop in for right now the Basil Gogo head sculpt, and then we'll just bring the hood back in place. One other thing I did also want to show you guys, but first, before I do that, that's what it looks like with the hood over top. That's a nice looking head sculpt. Nice looking head sculpt. But considering that this is, as I already mentioned, using technically the same body as Ghostface, one thing you can also do as well is that you can pop the head off for the Fiend. You probably can already know where this is going to be going. We're just going to put the figure down here for one second. I can just bear with me, bear with me, and get the figure to stand. And then once he's now, you know, I'll just lay him down for right now. I'm going to bring back the collar, the hood for Ghostface. And we're going to pop the head off here for the ghost face figure. Now, one thing that's nice is the fact that they're using the exact same ball joints. They didn't take the time to change anything on the sizing. So for all intents and purposes, if you wanted to, you could clip on a ghost face head sculpt. Let's just bring the hood back around. And you can get yourself a very interesting, very different looking ghost face. Of course, it has the more frayed kind of larger shoulder pieces for the, for the cloak. And the cloak is also a lot longer as well. May not be one that you're going to permanently want to have displayed with a ghost face head sculpt, but I thought it was a fun touch to see that they could actually use swappable heads this time around. Let's just go ahead and pop that off. Nobody wants to be seeing a, a review on the fiend. And then we've got ghost faces head in the way. Oh, what? I was going to be using this one right here. So we'll just pop that back onto the ball joint and put that back into place. Now, being the fact that it's also using the same ghost face body, if I was to say lift the cloak and I wanted to lift the cloak on the original ghost face, you can see like the legs are exactly the same. The feet, the footwear is also identical. The only thing that's really notably different is the fact that the ghost face legs kind of were more of a matte black and the fiend very obviously has more of a shinier, uh, shine black finish, like a shinier black finish. It, it does bring a little bit more, to, I suppose, to the table than if it just was a matte black. The thing also about it, too, is the cloak is so long anyways, you really wouldn't be able to see his legs or his feet for that matter. I feel almost in a way like the cloak is maybe a tad too long. I would have probably just brought it up a little bit. But I guess the idea really is it's supposed to be kind of draped against the, against the ground. And of course, it has a really interesting looking top piece to this as well. Now, this is all wire frame. The frame starts here and it wraps its way all around the back until it meets its way around the front of it, uh, uh, front of the figure again. It doesn't have a wire frame that I can see. Well, actually, there is a wire, a little small wire in the actual hood itself. So you can, you can bend that a little bit as well, but it's not nearly the thickness of the wire that he has right around here and not nearly the thickness that he has down here. Unfortunately, one thing with mine is that the wire is prone to popping out the bottom of the cloak periodically though you may see me as i'm especially moving this guy around that this one little wire right here always consistently seems to slide out at the bottom of the cloak now you can also hide that too if i just bring the cloak around i think actually it was over here anyway so you probably wouldn't have even noticed it but at least on mine it might be a little bit of an opening on the bottom of, of at least my cloak and that's probably causing the wire to pop out from time to time so just be you know just again be careful of that for the articulation here for the fiend i'm going to just bring back the, the hood first first of all the head's going to be on a ball joint whether you decide you say this head sculpt or the other two head looks down it looks up and you can also rock it back and forth just want to make sure i've got that all the way on there the upper torso is also on a ball joint so you can rotate that all the all the way around as well the arms do come out at 90 degrees of course doing this makes more of a mess especially when you got the top part of the cloak here but again, they come out 90 degrees. You're probably not going to be having the figure displayed like this anyways. But they also move forward. They move back. The figure has a double hinge. So he's got a hinge right there, right below the bicep. And he's got a secondary hinge closer to the forearms. So he can bend it in two places. 
Not something you could easily do with the other ghost face, just because, again, when we looked at that ghost face, with, of course, not having a mask at all, this ghost face actually had the fabric glued down onto the forearms, so you would never be able to see if there was a joint that was broken behind the scenes. You can see it a lot better here with the Fiend. Hands rotate also all the way around, so you can hinge them back and forth only just by a little bit. I mean, actually, no, there isn't a hinge there. It's just pegged in place. Legs do split out, though. You can take those legs. Actually, you know what? Let's just bring this up a little bit. Just to show you what it looks like basically behind the scenes. Upper torso is right there, the little crunch, the little ball joint. Then again, you've got the ball joints on the legs, so they can split out. And you can bring the legs forward, you can bring the legs back. There is a swivel at the top of the thigh, more for the way it's been assembled. A single hinge only in the knee. You can rotate the lower leg. And of course, you've got that same ankle articulation as before. It rocks back and forth this way and back and forth this way as well. Do bear with me while I just kind of clean up the shop before we, if we close for the night. Let's just bring this down. It, you know, again, it's a nice looking fiend. The ones that we had looked at before was a black and a red version of the retro cloth fiends. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why didn't you bring those in? Wouldn't you want to have seen, wouldn't you want to have shown those off along with the ultimate fiend? Yes. Unfortunately, though, as big of a fan of the, the misfits as I am, I have a friend who's even more of a fan and I am giving away those fiends. I probably could have just even asked him, hey, can I just borrow those fiends? But he might have very well just he might have very well just said no. Anyways, though, I really like the look of this fiend. He has a little bit of a harder time to stand because one thing that also goes with him as well is the fact he's got a very large cloak. And with the cloak being as long as it is, a lot of times it's hard to kind of really see where his feet are angled. So you want to just kind of make sure that they're leveled and flat. Again, we'll just slide over the fiend here. We'll bring back in the ghost face that has no mask right now. I mean, I'm not faulting at all the fact that NECA would have used the same mold again. Let's bring this hood over top of Ghostface's head. I mean, it was a fine head sculpt, and it was, uh, I should say, it was a fine body sculpt before. Then it makes more logical sense that they would have used the body again. And one thing that Ghostface couldn't have done, that Fiend now can do, is the fact that you got visibility on the elbow joints. With the elbow joints now being accessible here on the Fiend on both of his arms, it's easy then to see where you can bend it, and there's no potential of breaking. The same thing couldn't have been said when we looked at the original Ghostface. I've often said this about some of NECA's releases, that you don't even have to have a personal attachment to the character that the figure is based on. You could actually just really like the look of the figure. Even if I wasn't a fan, say, for example, of the Misfits, I do like the look of the Fiend, and as a skeletal character, he's going to look great on the shelf with some of my other figures of that same design. I'm not going to probably have him displayed necessarily next to Ghostface, for example. Ghostface I usually have just displayed with, like, my Jasons and my Freddies, for example. But you never know. I might just end up finding myself with the Fiend standing next to Ghostface. Now, in the final looks of the figure here, I've got the figure displayed with one of the albums in his hand, which he can very easily hold. And I've got the other two stacked on top of the tombstone. I thought that was kind of a nice touch. With the candelabra also in his other hand, the figure has some really decent accessories too. I think the only ones that I'm probably having no interest to really display with the figure is probably the daggers. Even though that one of the dagger, they did take the time to paint blood on the end of it, I'm probably just going to be putting those back in tray in favor of the album and the candelabra as my favorite. For the head sculpts, though, you have three to choose from, and honestly, I'm torn as to which one I like the most. The Basil Gogo one is nice, but I guess if I wanted a more traditional-looking fiend, or if, I, hey, I just wanted to have a skeletal ultimate figure, the other two probably do it a little bit better. The other two, though, are so close with one another, I don't feel like there's enough changes to really warrant why they would have included two extra head sculpts. One, though, is visibly brighter, but is it bright enough to really justify why they need to have two in the, in the packaging instead of just one and then this one here? But what do you guys think, though, of The Fiend? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you're a big fan of The Misfits, let me know down below in the comments section your top three favorite songs. Big thank you once again to the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of The Ultimate Fiend. Well, I know it's just on the back of his cloak now. I should have fixed that. It's still got the wire frame, by the way. That wire is still sticking out the bottom of it. I'm going to have to fix the back of it. Nobody likes, you know, what is that, like, almost like static cling. Remember back in the day when you, maybe your mom or someone was taking clothing out of the dryer and you put it on for the first time and your pants were sort of stuck up the side of your leg? No? Nobody else? Apparently that's just me. But once again, though, a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide the sample of the ultimate fiend from the band The Misfits. If you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing during the month of Spottober and certainly would like to stick around screaming for more, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're turning on as well the bell notification. Of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.